So now let's go through the creation of what I call the golden graph. Now I use the golden graph to identify network errors and correlate those network errors with drops in throughput. If I see a drop in throughput at the same time where I see various TCP errors, then I can get the general idea that I'm troubleshooting a network problem and I'm looking for things like lost packets or a, a Windows Zero condition. Now this is the only time when I will make and save a display filter. In the older days with Wireshark, I would make and save a bunch of display filters. But nowadays we use the filter expression area and it's just much faster than just pulling up filters in the filter area. The filter that we're going to create and save will be based on the bad TCP coloring rule. So instead of typing it from scratch, I'm going to open up the coloring rules window. And I'm going to take this bad TCP coloring rule string and I'm going to save that as a separate display filter. So to do that, I'll just double click on the bad TCP coloring rule line. And then I'm going to copy the entire string and we can see the contents of the string. It's basically looking for all TCP analysis flagged packets, but not window updates because window updates are good. So I'm going to copy that and then I'll just close down this coloring rules window. Now to create and save a new display filter, I could either click on this filter button on the left hand side of the display filter toolbar, or we can click on the display filter icon up on the main toolbar. So I'll click on the display filter icon on the main toolbar. Here are all of our display filters that are saved and I'm going to click new. Now remember, if you don't see your new display filter up on this list up above, it won't be saved. So you always have to click the new button to create a new display filter. I'm going to call this display filter that I saved just simply bad TCP because it's based on the bad TCP coloring rule. And then I'm going to paste in that string that I just copied and I'll click OK. Because I just created it, Wireshark assumes that I want to apply it to the trace file. The trace file we're going to work in to create this golden graph is called tr-youtubebad.pcapng. I will clear that filter out because I don't want it to be applied at this point. I don't need it. Now I'm ready to create the golden graph. I'll go up to Statistics and simply select IO Graph. Now Wireshark creates a basic I.O. graph and we can see there's the throughput level of all of the traffic in the trace file. And in graph 2, I want to place my bad TCP filter. So instead of typing it in each time or cutting and pasting it out of my coloring rules, I've saved it as a filter and I can access it quickly now by just simply clicking the filter button. Clicking the filter button, I can go down to the bottom of the list and there's my bad TCP filter and I'll say OK. Now I'll click the graph to button so that I can apply it to the graph. And this is a little trick. When very few TCP problems can affect the traffic, it might just completely be lost to you in the graph. The reason is our packet per second rate, which is what's being graphed by default, is much higher than our bad TCP per second rate. And so you can't even see the bad TCP packets. Because of that, we're going to change the scale here to logarithmic. I'm going to move this down so that we can see this when I do this. In the y-axis area under scale, I'm going to change the scale from auto to logarithmic. Now we can start to see that we have increases in bad TCP at specific points. To make it even more visible, I'm going to change that graph to line to FBAR format. Now it's very easy to see. And we can see that at the time where we have drops in throughput, we also have an increase in bad TCP, which tells me that these drops in throughput are most likely related to TCP problems. We can click on those bad TCP points in the trace file and we can see what's going on in the background. So it looks like at this point where I clicked, we have a zero window condition. Let's go over to this point and it looks like we again have a zero window condition. 
going back up towards the beginning here, again, it looks like all of these drops in throughput that we are experiencing have to do with a zero window condition. So I know that I'm going to be focusing on the receiver of the data to see why are you running out of buffer space. Things that I may want to check is, are we using window scaling in, these, in this connection? And if we aren't using window scaling, can I enable window scaling? Does the server support it? If so, why isn't my client supporting it? In addition, I may look at what other applications are running on that client that are taking up all of the processing power, or is the application the client is using just simply stupid? So that is the golden graph, and it really paints a picture and helps me figure out what am I focusing on. This does not appear to be a problem with errors coming back from a server. This is a problem dealing with TCP.